Hello there. The last time we met in video one, we talked about vertical transformations caused by the numbers in front of the function and behind the function. They were fairly straightforward, not a lot to remember. Today we're talking about the harder part of this, what goes on in the argument of the function. Those are the horizontal transformations. And as you'll find, they are trickier. So let's get started. You remember our vertical shifts, right? A plus three at the end, let's call this up again. A plus three over here at the end meant you move the graph up. A minus three on the end means you move the graph of the basic function down. Very straightforward. Not anymore. We're going to do a horizontal shift given by the function in the argument of the function. That's not really the way to say it. Given by x plus 3 in the argument of the function. Now our basic function here is y or f of x equals x squared and it's in black. But the graph of x plus 3 squared, a horizontal shift, is not going to the right, which is what you'd expect. If I tell you this is a horizontal shift and you see a plus 3, wouldn't you assume that the graph would go to the right three units? But it doesn't. No, no. To know which way you're going to be moving the transformed graph, you need to do what I've done down here. Let's make this bigger, make sure you can see it. The argument of the transformed function is x plus three. We have to set that equal to zero and solve for x in order to see the direction of movement. What you get is x equals negative three. This negative means, oh, make it blue like the graph, go to the left. Only now do I know for sure that I'm going to be moving to the left. Here's the basic graph, here's zero, zero. We're moving one, two, three units to the left to negative three, zero. And the rest of the graph travels with it. We're physically moving the basic function without changing its shape in any way, moving the basic function to the left three units by coding the argument x plus three quantity squared. You can tell what the basic function is by seeing the x and noting the power up there. x squared is the basic graph right here. x plus three squared is the transformed graph and you're going in the direction opposite of what you'd expect, unless you go through this maneuver down here. There's a technical reason we do that, and it's called transforming the origin. 
actually moving the origin. But at this stage, you don't have to know that. Just know this. OK, let's look at the basic function x cubed. Right here, f of x or y equals x cubed. <clears throat> and that's in black right here. Goes through zero, zero, which is what happens with most of the basic functions. Now, I'm going to move this graph horizontally. And if I take x plus four, come down here, set it equal to zero, and solve for x, I find out that the x's are going to move left four units. Let's write left, left, left. You're going to see this happening over and over again. All of the X coordinates, if you're interested, all of the X coordinates of the basic graph have three subtracted from them or a negative three added to them. Same here. Here we have X equals zero. Here we have X equals one. Here we have Y equals one. No, no, no x equals negative one. I do get carried away, don't I? Now, zero minus four is negative four. One minus four is negative three. Negative one minus four is negative five. That's the technical part of what's happening. For the vertical transformations, or I should say the vertical transformations, affected the y coordinate of every point. The horizontal transformations affect the x coordinate of every point. Now here our basic graph is f of x equals the square root of x, or y equals the square root of x. The argument is underneath the square root radical, right there. So I take x plus 2, and I set it equal to 0, and find out that x equals negative 2. That is, all of the x's are going to move left two units, and two will be subtracted from every x coordinate of every point. Left. So here we have x equals zero, here we have x equals one, gives us the point one, one, And one, two, three, four gives us the point. Here's two up here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, well, that should be four, two. The basic graph, remember. Now, I'm going to subtract 2 from every x coordinate or add negative 2 to every x coordinate. Did I say subtract negative 2? I hope I didn't. So let's say it again. I am going to subtract 2 from every x coordinate on the basic graph or I'm going to add negative two to every X coordinate. Gets me the same place. Zero minus two is negative two. One minus two 
is negative one. Now look at this. Even better, this is, I need to make this larger. This point is now negative two, zero. This point was zero, zero. You see how the Y coordinates are not affected. Here the point one, one will move to the left two units. One minus two is negative one. So this is the point negative one, one. The one stays the same in the Y coordinate place, but the X coordinate is changed. And we have the same thing going on here. Four will move to two. So this will be the point two, two, where the X coordinate moves two units to the left, but the Y coordinate stays exactly the same. Now we're going to make a horizontal shift to the right. In order to know what direction the function will move, set the argument of the function equal to zero and solve for x. Again, our basic function is f of x equals x squared, which is in black. The transformed function is x minus three squared with x minus three forming the argument of the function. Come down here, x minus three equals zero. Solve that for x. x equals three, that's a positive three. So X is moving three units now to the right. This is the safest way to know whether you're moving left or right. All right, now look here. This is zero, zero. If I add three to zero, I come over here. This point is three, zero. The Y coordinates are unaffected. The X coordinates all have three added to them. So don't be fooled by the sign up here. We're going to see similar results over here. Here's the basic function, f of x equals x to the third. The argument of the transformed function is x minus four. And what this will mean is all of the x coordinates have four added to them, resulting in the transformed graph being picked up and moved physically, if you want, want to think of it that way, four units to the right. And here we have the basic function, the square root of x, and in the argument of the function, which is underneath the radical, the argument is x minus two. I set it equal to zero, which shows that x is positive two. And that means all of the x coordinates will move two units to the right because two is added to them. Piece of cake, right? 
except there's an extra step there. Whoops, it's something else to learn. And life is learning. If it's not, you're dead. Okay. There's no such thing as wasted time. You're always learning something. Okay, now we're going to talk about horizontal reflections. You remember when we talked about vertical reflections? If this is the basic function, y equals x squared, then y equals negative x squared multiplies all of the y coordinates by negative one. And so this point is moved down here. This point, because negative one times zero is just zero, stays the same, but negative one, one becomes negative one, negative one. Well, we have a slightly different situation here. Now the negative is inside the argument and I put a negative one there, but it's really a negative, which is really a negative one. And now you would be expected to say, aha, that negative sign is going to multiply the X coordinates. And technically, you'd be wrong. This is really negative one. And technically speaking, the negative one divides all the X coordinates. Now, since multiplying and dividing by negative one accomplish the same thing, it wouldn't make a difference in this case. But you're going to see some other cases in just a few minutes in which the number in front of the X in the argument divides the X coordinates. It does not multiply them. See how tricky this is. Okay, let's look. Here we have y equals x cubed. And it's the black graph here. And let's make it a little larger. A little darker, I should say. It's important that you be able to see the difference between y equals x to the third and y equals quantity negative one x to the third. In other words, our basic graph is going to be shifted sideways across the, <coughs> excuse me, across the x axis. Actually, it's more of a mirror image, just like in the vertical case, you have a mirror image down here of the image up there. Well, this time we have a mirror image here of this graph. Let's look at how it happens. Not the Y coordinate, but the X coordinate is divided by negative one. What that does is that gives us negative one, one. And over here, the X coordinate negative one, when it's divided by negative one, becomes a positive one. So that moves over here. 
the negative one becomes a positive one, and that negative one is still a negative one. Only the X coordinates are changed. And of course, if you take zero, the X coordinate here, divide it by negative one or any number other than zero, you're going to get zero. So this point doesn't appear to change. So let's do this. Try to make it black and blue. Mm. Okay. Now. Here we have the basic graph y equals the square root of x, which is right here. As you know by now, oops, as you know by now, that's what the graph of the square root of x looks like when it's in its home position when it's the basic function. Now, what about this? Whoops, the square root of negative one. That negative Where did I go? Here we are. This negative, a negative one, is in the argument of the function underneath the square root radical. It's going to divide all the x coordinates so that zero, zero remains zero, zero. But one, one becomes negative one, one. And four, two becomes negative four, two. Those are called reflections across the y axis. Just like this is called a reflection across the x axis. Okay, and here I have a little chart. One, one becomes one divided by negative one, one, which gives us negative one, one. Zero divided by negative one is zero. Oops, that should have been a zero. So I have now zero, zero. This doesn't move, it remains zero, zero. But this, look at this. Negative one divided by negative one is positive one. But the negative one remains the same. So we have one negative one. In other words, this, no, this moves over here and what is it? No, 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 this moves up here. Now I had this, this moves over here and this moves over here, yes. That's how we get the transformation. These are really tricky. Notice how this arm of the graph is reflected over here. This arm of the graph is reflected over here. Whatever is in the first quadrant is moved to the second quadrant. Whatever is in the third quadrant is moved to the fourth quadrant. Okay, now we're going to do a horizontal stretch. Now this also is not what you'd expect. 
Let's go back up and look at the vertical stretches for a minute. There we are, vertical stretch. A vertical stretch happens when the number in front of the basic function is a number bigger than one. What happens? You pull up and the graph, the resultant transformation graph, gets closer to the y-axis, at least most of the time trying to find my little thing that'll make this move over. There we go. Imagine pulling up on this arm and down on this arm so that you're stretching it. And this is the graph that you get. And the same thing here, it's really obvious here. Here you have the square root of X. Here you have a stretched version of the square root of x. The trick is that the number in front of the function, the basic function, is a number greater than one. Now we come to a horizontal stretch. And the opposite, if you want to think of it that way, is true. Horizontal. There we are. All right, here's our reflection. And now a horizontal stretch occurs when you have a number between zero and one. In front of the X, in the argument. One half is between zero and one. One fifth is between zero and one. One fourth is between zero and one. Well, how on earth you might be saying to yourselves, how does that end up stretching? Well, remember what I said before. that this number is going to be dividing the x-coordinates. When you divide by a number between 0 and 1, you make the number you're dividing into larger. For instance, let me show you. Suppose I have the number 6. Let's make that a neutral color. Well, okay, green, let's do green. Ooh, let's do violet. Suppose you have six divided by one half. Well, that's six divided by 0.5. Let's put that in the calculator and see what happens. Six divided by point five is twelve. It's bigger. Now, six divided by five is a different matter. Six divided by five. 1.2, it's smaller. So when you divide a number by a number greater than one, you make that number smaller. But when you divide a number by a number between zero and one, you make that number bigger. That's how you get a stretch. 
Now here we have some points. Remember, this is y equals x squared, the basic graph. Let's find some points. 1, 1, 1, comma, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, And nine, I think that's nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, this is nine. So three, nine. And we'll also have negative three, nine. and negative two, four. And negative one, one. All right, those are the original points on the basic graph. Now I'm going to take these X coordinates and divide them by one half. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three divided by one half is six. So this becomes the point six, nine. Two divided by one half. Maybe I should do it like this. 2 divided by 1 half, comma 4, is going to be 4, 4. And here we go. 1 divided by 1 half, y stays the same is going to be 2, 1. And I could do the same over here. Let's do this one. This is negative 6, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Negative, this point is negative 3 divided by 2. Yeah divided by 0.5, which is one half. That's a point, comma, nine. Well, negative three divided by 0.5 is negative six. So that's negative six, nine. Do you see how the X coordinates are spread apart? They're stretched apart. The X coordinates, just think of the X coordinates. And so you have a horizontal stretch, like you would have if you were playing an accordion, the kind of instrument that goes like that. Here we have basic function y equals x to the third, and we're going to divide all of the x coordinates on this graph by one fifth. One fifth equals 0.2. Okay, here we have zero, zero. Here we have 1, 1. What? Because I'm thinking about the next number. 1, 1.
And let's see now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, if X is two, we'll have two to the third power, which is eight. So if X is two, Y is eight. And here we have negative one, negative one. And here we have negative two, negative eight. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight. So two, negative eight. Negative two, I mean, negative eight. And those are points, oops, two, eight. Those are points on the basic graph. Now, if I, let me prove to you that one fifth is really point two. There, see, point two. If I divide two by point two, I get 10. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, I, it's, I'm up. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yupper. That gives me 10, 8. And then let's kind of cut this short. Negative 2 divided by 0.2 will be negative 10. And negative 8 stays the same. So again, the x coordinates are stretching out. You're stretching out. You're stretching out. Now here is the basic function, y equals the square root of x. Right here. Let's find some points. How about 1, 1, well, 0, 0. 1, 1. And one, two, three, four, two. Here's two, here's one, two. Four, two. Now this is kind of hard. Of course, if you take zero and divide it by 0.2, you're still going to get zero. This point stays the same. But one divided by 0.2, what is that? Let's look. One divided by 0.2, which is one fifth is five. So now one, two, three, four, five. That should be one. These graphs aren't perfect and my graphs aren't perfect. But it's almost perfect. So this is going to be the graph five, one. And I don't have room to graph that one, but if I were to take four, and divide it by 0.2. Hello, oops, I need the rest of the calculator. Four divided by 0.2, that would be 20. Good grief. Two 
This moves out to 20 comma 2. So all of the X coordinates are stretched out. That's why this is called a horizontal stretch. Now a horizontal shrink smushes the X coordinates together. Smushes is a very technical term. And you know what does it? A number in front of X in the argument that will divide all the X coordinates by three by a number greater than one, which makes the X coordinates smaller. So in the basic graph, Y equals X squared, we have zero, zero. We have one, one. And we have two, four. So one, two, three, four. And directly across, we have negative two, four. Negative, yeah, negative two, four. And directly across, we have negative one, one. That incidentally is the meaning of symmetry. The points on the right are exactly the same distance as the matching point on the left from the y-axis or from the axis of symmetry. Okay, now I am going to divide the X coordinates by three. Watch what happens. One divided by three is now one third, comma one. And negative one divided by three, this point becomes Should have made it blue, but oh well. Negative one third. One. Play around with some points on y equals x squared. And you'll see this. It's really totally interesting. Okay, again, y equals x cubed f of x equals x cubed, here's zero, zero. Here is one, one. Already very stretched out, so you can see the difference between these. If I hadn't stretched out the scale, for instance, the x scale is one, two, three. Look at the distance there. But this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I had to do that because this was way too close to the y-axis. You couldn't even see it. This way you can see it. So it's funny looking, but this is the point 1, 1. And this is the point negative one, one. And we'll have two, eight. So, well, not, yeah, we will. Here's two, eight. And negative two, 
negative 8, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, right here. Negative 2, negative 8. All right, now what's going to happen now? Well, all of these X coordinates are going to be divided by four. This point moves here. And what is two divided by four? It's one half. So this is going to be one half. Eight. See how scrunched up this is? One divided by four is one fourth. One fourth. One. Of course, zero divide, divided by four stays zero. Negative one divided by four becomes negative one fourth. Negative one fourth, negative one. Ah. And negative two, negative eight becomes negative one half, negative eight. See how all of the X coordinates move in. They're becoming smaller. Here we have y equals the square root of x as our basic function. Here we have a 5 in front of the x in the argument, which is underneath the radical. So let's see, here's one, one. And here's four, one, two, three, four, four, two. Now look what happens. Forget that this looks taller. We're looking at what happens to the X coordinates. If I divide one by five, then this point will become one fifth one. And this point will become four fifths This is happening to all of these X coordinates. They're all getting squished closer and closer to the Y axis. 